Welcome to another Harrier tutorial and this time we're going to be looking at the laser jaredam. Now these weapons like all laser guided weapons are really designed to be fired one at a time but most people can get two maybe three kills in a single pass however with this method and a little bit of practice you should be able to get six or seven kills in a single pass most of the time. I'm going to start by showing how that's done followed by review in tack view and then i want to show how we can steal a kill or two even if we were engaged by a sam at the worst possible time and finally for those who aren't familiar with laser j dams at all i'll cover their use in a little bit more detail right at the end so if that's you you might want to skip to that part first so let's get on board and take a look Okay, we're on board. We've already prepared and armed our weapons. We already have a point track on the tail vehicle. And so the only thing to do before releasing the weapons are to fire the laser and to get to the correct altitude and pitch. We need around 800 to 1000 feet per bomb. And here we're going to try and drop in all 10 bombs. So I'm going to descend at full throttle to somewhere between 8 and 10,000 feet. We don't want our laser to disarm before the end of the attack run and we don't want to forget it either. So I'm going to fire it just as we get in range and we want to be in a shallow dive at that point as well. Laser on. Pickle. Release and pitch up to about 10 degrees. Pickle. Pitch up to 15 degrees. Pickle. 18 degrees. Pickle. 23 degrees. Pickle, 28 degrees, Pickle, 30 degrees, Pickle, 33 degrees, Pickle, 32 degrees, Pickle, 30 degrees, and then break away. Now I'm flying the aircraft to ensure that I maintain the target in our teapod and adjusting the zoom to keep the second target visible. Shank 1 and now it's just a case of trying to acquire the targets as fast as you can. Shank 2 Miss Shack 3, Shack 4, Shack 5, Shack 6, and I'm going to go for two kills here, 7 8. Shack 9, and I think that's probably it. Now that might look quite straightforward, but it's not. So let's take a quick look at tack view. First of all, I should make it clear that you shouldn't be expecting to get 9 or 10 kills here. With 10 bombs, you should be expecting to get six kills pretty much all of the time, and occasionally seven or eight if you're lucky. If you need to get a 100% kill ratio, then you need to limit your ambitions to about five bombs in a single pass. 
as you can see, the drop spacing was fairly even with the second bomb drop six seconds after the first, then four seconds, then four seconds, and then seven seconds for the first five bombs. So you'd expect to see a big gap, then two small gaps, then a big gap on the impacts. However, there is only one small gap, and if you follow the bombs, you will see that actually the small gap is from bomb four catching up bomb two. And bomb three is so slow that it impacts at the same time as bomb five. And no amount of practice is going to entirely eliminate this. The best we can do is to try and be as smooth and consistent as possible. But generally, you want a larger gap after the first drop, as the targets will split in all directions, and so it's hard to get the second hit. And also a larger gap as you get to 25 to 30 degrees pitch as your speed starts to drop. Unfortunately, you can't really increase the drop spacing much as the first one is already at the limit of range and the last bomb is already overshooting and having to track back on itself. You could fly slower, but this would make you more vulnerable and wouldn't really help all that much. So if you're thinking why we shouldn't fly straight and level and let gravity do its thing, these aren't gravity bombs, they're guided, so they will bunch up. And here is an example of 10 bombs dropped with an 8 to 9 second drop separation, and they all group together. In fact, these came so thick and fast, I only got two kills. One of the concerns here is flying at 20,000 feet above a target, which could be a dangerous place to be. And if you are engaged by surface to air units, then you should immediately stop any further releases, but you don't need to entirely abort the attack. Here, I've just got a spike off a snow drift. So I want to turn away from the radar, but if possible, not too far away from the target and you should start to descend quickly. You want to get down to around 8 to 10,000 feet for a search radar and around 4 to 5,000 feet if you have a tracking radar locked onto you. And during this time you should still be trying to look to guide your bombs on target. Only when you detect a launch should you try to make the dive for safety. So I'm pulling out of the dive now at about 9,000 feet I've now got the tracking radar, so I'm going to go a little bit lower. Okay, there's a launch, but I do have a kill, and now I'm going to head for safety. And I managed to sneak a second kill just about. So that's the main part finished and it's yet another capability that only the Harrier is able to deliver. I want to cover the basic use in a second but for everyone else I hope you found this useful and if so please do hit like and subscribe. So, if you aren't familiar with laser JDAMs, here is the procedure from an air start. So, master arm on, air to ground mode, select our weapon and change the fusing from safe. Then we can bring up our teapod, arm our laser and change it from training to laser. Then as usual we need to go to teapod hotas mode and as I know the target is near waypoint 1, we'll hit waypoint designate and then we can change the view to flare view and then we can search for our targets using a TDC field of view button and zoom controls.
Once we've found our target, we need to press TDC action to change to T-Pod designate. And to track a vehicle, we need to go to point tracking using OSB 20 or sensor select aft. Then it's waypoint increment long to bring up the JDAM symbology. Let's take a quick pause there. Okay, so when the reticule reaches the six o'clock position, that's the maximum range of the bomb based on your high speed and pitch angle. Whereas 12 o'clock is the minimum and three o'clock is effectively the free fall distance. And there'll be a corresponding number going from zero to 100 at three o'clock and back down to zero at 12 o'clock. Whilst three o'clock is the ideal drop position, I rarely wait till that point as I prefer not to loiter around the target unnecessarily. So I tend to drop early, especially if you're doing multiple drops. In the center is a steering queue and you should try and keep that in the center. However, this isn't always possible when climbing steeply doing ripple fires. As for the laser, it only fires for two minutes before automatically turning off. So I tend to press fire just as I get to maximum range. You could fire sooner or even after dropping, but it is easy to forget. So I think that's an ideal time to fire. We're now about one mile from maximum range. Okay, let's fire the laser. And pickle. Now you should note for JDAMs you need to press and hold pickle for about a second for it to release. So make sure you wait for the cue, but you will feel and hear the bomb come off the rail. And that's it. The bomb will now track so long as you keep away from clouds and inside the gimbal limits of the teapot, then you should get a kill. For the second time, thanks for watching, and if you've liked this video, please do hit like and subscribe.